Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The basis for our sermon meditation this evening on this epiphany is from our epistle reading where St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. This is our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know about you, but I am finding that the world is becoming an increasingly divisive place. Every issue, every event seems to become an us versus them, where people choose sides, they build up walls, And they're not able to communicate with each other. In politics, it's Republicans versus Democrats, conservatives versus liberals, Trump supporters versus Trump haters. In society, it's blacks versus whites, men versus women, immigrants versus citizens. In religion, Jews and Christians versus Muslims, Christians versus atheists or agnostics or non-Christians. Every issue. Every topic, people will choose up sides and they build up walls. And those walls do nothing but separate people from one another and it makes communication between the two sides difficult, if not impossible. In Jesus and Paul's day, there was a dividing wall between those who were Jews and those who were Gentiles or non-Jews. That dividing wall that separated Jews from Gentiles was put there by the Jews because if you were a faithful Jew, the most important thing was for you to remain clean. And you avoided anything or anyone who would make you unclean. And the Jews considered the Gentiles unclean. The Gentiles were unclean because of the food that they ate, because of the false gods that they worshipped, because of the types of sins that they committed, and because they were not considered by Jews to be included in God's family. This dividing wall between Jews and Gentiles was constructed by various laws that the Jews created for themselves. Jews were forbidden from entering Gentile homes. And Jews were forbidden from welcoming Gentiles into their own homes. Jews were forbidden to sit down and eat at the same table as Gentiles. This dividing wall between Jews and Gentiles was so strong, in fact, that when Jews who were traveling back into Judea, their land of promise, they would actually shake the dirt and the dust off of their feet if they had been in Gentile territory. Because they didn't want that unclean Gentile dust or dirt to contaminate their own holy land. Now it's in light of this divisive wall between Jews and Gentiles that we should hear what Matthew has to say in the Gospel reading about these visitors from the East. Matthew writes, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold! If you read Matthew's Gospel, whenever you see the word behold, Matthew wants to draw your attention to this Because it's something important, it's something surprising he wants you to see. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. These wise men from the east were unclean Gentiles. be 
these wise men from the East knew more about mathematics and philosophy and astronomy and sorcery than they did about God's own Word. But believe it or not, here are these unclean Gentiles in Jerusalem, the most holy city to the Jews, asking, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? But he wants to do so much more than just find the king of the Jews. They say, we have come to worship the king of the Jews. This is unheard of. And what Matthew is doing is he's telling us, he's giving us a glimpse here of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has come into this world to do. Jesus is not just going to be the King of the Jews. He's going to be the King of all people. The King of kings and Lord of lords. This Jesus during his earthly life, is going to minister to both Jews and Gentiles and let them know that they both have a place in God's kingdom. This Jesus is going to suffer, die, and rise again for both Jews and Gentiles so that anyone who comes to him, Jew or Gentile, seeking the forgiveness of their sins will find it. Wanting eternal life will receive it. This is the good news that St. Paul shares with the Christians in the church in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 3. St. Paul writes there, This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now, if we're going to understand the full impact of what Paul is saying here, we have to back up a little bit to Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, I want you to hear what St. Paul has to say that Jesus has done for the relationship between Jews and Gentiles. St. Paul says, Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, remember that you Gentiles were at that time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you Gentiles who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For Jesus himself is our peace, who has made us both, Jews and Gentiles, one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that Jesus might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us Jews and Gentiles to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And Jesus came to you Gentiles and preached peace who were far off, and he came to you Jews to preach peace to you for those that were near. For through Jesus, we both, Jews and Gentiles, have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Did you hear that? Do you understand the impact of that? St. Paul says to those Gentiles, before Jesus, you were strangers and aliens. You had no place in God's family. Your sins separated you from God. You had no hope of salvation, no hope of eternal life. But now in Jesus, you have forgiveness of sins. He has brought you into God's family. And the promise of salvation and eternal life is yours. To the Jews, he says, your special place in God's family is not based on the fact that you are a Jew or based on the fact that you follow all of the Jewish commandments and Jewish traditions. Your place in God's family comes through faith in Jesus Christ as well. 
And Jesus has taken both you Jews and you Gentiles and he's brought you together in one family. So that whether you are Jew or Gentile, salvation comes to you by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But just like our Lord Jesus Christ, who is so gracious and generous to us, it's not just salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life that He gives, but He creates a whole new people, a whole new relationship between these Jews and these Gentiles. Listen again to what St. Paul says. For Jesus Himself is our peace, who has made us, both Jews and Gentiles, one, and has broken down in His flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body, through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. What about that dividing wall that separated Jews from Gentiles? Jesus Christ has torn it down. What about the hostility that existed between the Jew and the Gentile? Jesus has killed the hostility by his own death and resurrection and given peace to the Jews and the Gentiles. What about the two people, the Jews and the Gentiles? The Lord Jesus Christ has brought them together. They are now one people, gathered together by the one Holy Spirit, under the one head, their Lord Jesus Christ. Now, why should you care about this? Why does this matter to you? Because you're a Gentile. If you go back in your family history far enough, you will find that most of you are Gentiles. And apart from Jesus Christ, you are dead in your sins, without hope, with no salvation and no eternal life. But our God, who is loving and gracious and merciful, sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save Gentiles like us. This Jesus, the one that the wise men came to worship and gave gifts to, That's your Jesus. That's your King. That's your Savior. That's your Savior who has come to knock down that wall that divided us between God who is holy and we sinners who are unholy. This Jesus is your Jesus who will come and live a perfect life for you in your place to make up for your imperfect life. This is your Jesus who will suffer and die on the cross, whose very blood will cover all of your sins. This is your Jesus who rises again from the dead and shares that victory over death with you. Jesus is not just the Savior of the Jews. He's your Savior too. But Jesus does even more than we can possibly imagine or think. Jesus has come to, not just to give us salvation, not just to give us the hope of eternal life, but this Jesus also tears down those dividing walls of hostility that we have built in our own lives. Think for a moment in your own life. Is there a dividing wall of hostility that you have built between you and someone else? Are you locked in a conflict with someone else that has it you versus them? Maybe there's a dividing wall of hostility between you and your spouse or between you and your ex. 
between you and your kids or you and your parents, between you and someone else in your family, between you and your boss or your coworker, between you and a brother and sister in Christ. If there is a dividing wall of hostility in your life between you and someone else, know that the Lord Jesus Christ, who has torn down that dividing wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile, can tear down that wall of hostility in your own life. That the forgiveness of sins that Jesus has shown you is also the forgiveness of sins that He has shown them. So where there is that dividing wall of hostility between you and someone else, let the Lord Jesus Christ tear it down. In Jesus, you have forgiveness of sins. And in Jesus, you can forgive others their sins. Where there is hostility, in Jesus, you have peace. And in Jesus, you can be a peacemaker. Where there is anger, in Jesus we show kindness. If there are people that irritate us, in Jesus we show patience and understanding. Today, as I said earlier, is the day of Epiphany. Epiphany means to reveal or to make known. Today, Jesus has revealed to us that salvation belongs also to us, we who are Gentiles. That His gift of forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation is ours because He is our Jesus who has claimed us in baptism and faith to be His people and members of His family. But he's also revealed to us today that those dividing walls of hostility that we've built up between us and someone else don't have to be there. They can come down. And this Jesus who has shown us forgiveness, mercy, and grace, we can be his people and go out this week and show them forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.